Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. It's been a week for me, time to get back to painting, and today we're going to be painting the rest of the Shadow Throne, starting with the Patriarch. Finally good to get back into painting. Now we've assembled up to the point where it gets in the way of painting, and we've primed the model with Bright Touch Car Primer, grey color. Alright, with Eschen Grey, Pallid Witch Flesh, and White Scar, we're going to do our basic uh, undercoating and then later I will use a Lamian medium with white scar to do some finer lines so basically with an airbrush we paint the under half with Eschen gray he also has two familiars which I found out he actually only has one there's a magus in the box so I accidentally painted up two familiars for this so. and then with pallid witch flesh we're gonna paint from the upper 45 degree angle down basically we want a little bit of this on every surface even like his like chest and belly would normally not receive light I just want a little bit on it to add some color and then we're going to dry brush White Scar White all over the model. And this is going to be our good undercoat. And then with White Scar White mixed with a little bit of Lamian Medium to help it flow better, we're going to apply this on certain edges or stuff to make the highlight better. His carapace, on the edges of his carapaces, some parts of his claws, uh, simple stuff like that, some of his facial features, it just to make them stand out. And now with Kalidor Sky, Damon at Hyde, and Lamian Medium, we're going to paint the basic body. Now this took a lot longer than it's going to be in this video, but with Kalidor Sky, mixed with Lamian Medium until it's a good wash-like consistency, somewhat thick, I'm going to apply it all over his carapace. And then with Damon at Hyde doing the same process with Lamian Medium, I'm going to apply it all over his like flesh, his hands, his joints, those places in between. Yeah, like that. With the Kalidor Sky, basically what I'm doing is I'm doing the highlight first, and the depth and shadow will come later in the form of oil paints. And now with magenta and lamp black from Windsor Newton oil colors, we're basically I basically we're adding a little bit of black to the magenta, maybe three parts magenta to one part black. It's kind of a crapshoot for me. The black is very strong, and then we smooth it, uh, make it into a smooth paint with a little bit of mineral spirits, and then we just brush it all on like we're painting the whole model. We want to avoid the parts that are pink, and then we're going to take a makeup brush or no, makeup sponge, and then just wipe everything off. There's like a preliminary wipe where we wipe off the majority of the paint, then we move to a cleaner part of the uh, sponge or another sponge that's clean, and then we go further, and this shows the highlights underneath. And then you can see it creates this really, really nice, like, highlighting, edging, and stuff. And this is our, essentially our first layer where we're getting in the most depth and shadow in.
And then we're repeating the exact same process again, but we're adding a lot more mineral spirits to turn it into a wash. And then we apply this all over the blue. We avoid the pink as best we can. And then we use a hair dryer to rapidly dry out the mineral spirits. And then we do a little bit of brush up with a sponge on the most prominent areas. And this adds plenty of depth and color to it. Alright, now with Nagaroth Knight, Xerxes Purple, and Emperor's Children, we're going to be painting his mouth, teeth, and some of his head. So what we're going to do is start off with Nagaroth Knight. I'm going to paint the inside of his mouth this, as well as his teeth. And his uh, tongue sticking out has like teeth on the end, so just FYI. Then we're going to do a little mix of Nagaroth Knight and Xerxes Purple and apply it on top of the teeth and the teeth on his tongue. And it didn't do much, so then I went with pure Xerxes Purple. And then what I did was I took a little bit of Emperor's Children, mixed it with Xerxes Purple and applied it to the uh, tips of his teeth. And then what I also did was apply some pure Emperor's Children into his uh, eyes to make the eyeballs, or as best I could, just with a very fine brush. But then I also took Emperor's Children mixed with um, some Lamian Medium to make it lighter, and then I applied it to his brain, yeah, and to make it more pinkish. And I also did this with all of his... Uh, Whatever those things are. They look like gills scattered everywhere, but they're not. And so it was just to increase the color. And then I took, I have the paint shown at the end, but with Pallid Witch Flesh, I then mixed a little bit of that into the Empress Children and applied it to... So basically the model's going to have two fingers like touching his head, and in the demo picture, that place is lighter because it's like channeling psychic power. So I'm just applying a few extra layers of lighter Emperor's Children mixed with Lamian Medium and Pallid Witch Flesh to lighten that area, and then I apply a little bit of that same paint onto the finger, two fingers that are going to be touching the brain. And now back to magenta, an oil wash with the magenta paint, we're going to apply this on all the pink stuff and his brain and his hands and feet and stuff. And then once that dries out with the help of a hair dryer from a distance, we don't want to blow the liquid out, we then take a makeup sponge and then clean up the excess. This will add extra depth and shade that's the right color, especially on the brain, this matters. And then with some Liquitex Ceramic Stucco, instead of the paste, because this has like little rocks in it and stuff, very fine, so it's like a ground sand putty, I then apply this onto this circle, uh, the circular flat part of the base that I made in 3D printing, which I showcased on one of my worst videos ever. And then I super glued the base part of the jean sealer onto it. And then I just waited for it to dry. I should have done this towards the beginning because it kind of ruined my flow. I basically had to sit and wait for like an hour or two for the thing to dry before I could paint it. And now with not matte varnish, actually gloss varnish. I made that mistake. I realized that after I took the picture, but I wasn't going to bother retaking the picture. So with Liquitex gloss varnish, Rune Fang Steel Air, Carbon Black Liquitex, and uh, Burnt... Uh, burnt sienna we basically apply these together and create a brass darkish brass metallic thing and I apply it onto the pipe and the surrounding area of the pipe and then with lead belcher and none of the other paints because I it looked good enough <laughs> I then take Lead Beltra with a little bit of water and apply it onto the metal grate part. Uh, 
of the base thing. And now for the bases, we're going to take Corvus Black and Dark Reaper. We're going to paint the stones on the base and like the broken stone and the stucco I applied with Corvus Black. And then we're going to dry brush the whole thing with uh, Dark Reaper to make the bricks show some depth and as well as the dirt and stuff around the metal pipe. Alright, with Emperor's Children, Carrick Stone, Skeleton Horde Contrast, Gilman Flesh, and Anthonian Camo Shade, we're going to paint the small details on the pipe. We'll start off with Carrick Stone, water down a bit, and we're going to apply this on all the skulls that he has all scattered throughout. And one of the familiars is also holding a skull, so just FYI. And then we're going to take Emperor's Children, we're going to apply it to these, I don't know what this is. This bubble gum. alright. And then we're going to take Skeleton Horde Contrast, dilute it a bit with Lamian Medium to help it flow better, and apply it on all the skeletons. We'll do about two of these, uh, depending on the head and stuff. And then with Gullum and Flesh, I should have used Pure, but I diluted it a bit with Lamian Medium as a safety measure. That's normally the right call, but in this case it wasn't. I applied onto the bubblegum looking thingies, and uh, it wasn't good enough, so I had to do like two, maybe three coats. Later I came back with a bit of the Pure and applied it much later, but... And then I took Anthonian Camo Shade, also diluted with a bit of Lamian Medium. I probably should have done a little, maybe less Lamian Medium on this one. And then I applied it to the skulls to give them a greenish shade on them. And now with Windsor Newton oil color burnt umber and nothing else because I decided I didn't need it later, I then make an oil wash and I apply this to the pipe and the metal and some of the surrounding area. And then I clean it up with a makeup sponge. And then finally when all that's done I decide to do a final assembly. Now I didn't know this at the time, but apparently there's a giant hole in the top part of the pipe he's on. That's because that's where the foot is supposed to be. So after I assembled it I didn't put any glue on that hole piece. And every time I pick this thing up, I hear a little rackety sound. Just FYI, you have to glue that foot in there. And so, like, the piece is mostly solid. It's just like as I move it, like, shake it a little bit, I hear, like, a little rackety sound. Well, that's irritating, but I'm stuck with it. And now, I decided the model looks a little dull, so I wanted to add a little more f flavor to him. So with Temple Guard Blue, Golem and Flesh, Iron Hand Steel, Rise of Rust, Nih Nih this Oxide Color, and Blood for the Blood God. I skipped Blood for the Blood God now, I realize that it's a bad step for it, so this is actually one of the last things I add, so skip Blood for the Blood God for now. And Lamian Medium, I'm gonna fix up a few things. Now with Temple Guard Blue diluted with Lamian Medium close to a wash, like probably three parts Temple Guard to one part Lamian, I apply it to the tips of his spikes and to the tips of his claws. The tips of his spikes have been rubbed off and there's just plastic or primer underneath because uh, of constant touching. One of the negatives of using all these wash-like things is the paint is very thin and easy to scrape off, so you definitely have to varnish afterwards. But this is just to add a little bit of a to cover up uh, places where the paint is rubbed off and add like a light point onto the spikes. Then with Gullum and Flesh we apply this onto the sidings and areas of the pipes to add like grime or wear and tear, age, stuff like that. Then we take Iron Hand Steel and then do the opposite of that and shine up a few places where there are scratch marks, uh, raised points, edges, do some overbrushing and side brushing to add a little bit of shine to it. Then with Rise of Rust, we're just going to apply this occasionally here and there to show effects of rust around the scratches and around other places where 
they just might need it. Less is more on this. And then with the oxide color, we're going to apply this on a f just a few places where there are holes, maybe a little bit around some scratches. Very little of this, just to add a little bit of flavor. Now with Fire Drake Bright and Luganoth Orange, I shouldn't have used that color, but I did, and Lamian Medium, I'm going to brighten up the spot where he's channeling his Psychic Might. With Fire Dragon Bright mixed with Lamian Medium, I'm going to apply it onto that area, and it looks a little too thick in transition, so I, add, I dry off my brush and add water to it to help smooth it out from the area. And then I apply that to the fingers that is touching there as well. And then it is fine. I What I should have done was a one-to-one -one mix, but I did a pure uh, Luganoth orange, and that was way too bright. I should have done a one-to-one -one mix with the Fire Dragon Bright and Luganoth, and then just applied it into a small area. But it was too bright. I eventually went back and fixed it with uh, some of that magenta uh, paint beforehand to help it blend in and stuff, because it was too bright and it didn't blend that well into the surrounding area. And now with AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish and Liquitex Gloss Varnish, we're going to varnish the model. So with AK Interactive, we're basically applying this everywhere except for the metal and that bubblegum stuff. Whatever. And then we use the gloss varnish on that bubblegum stuff. I was thinking of using it on the brain, but like, I don't think that would truly be an exposed brain. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the lore on that, so I just made the fleshy bubblegummy stuff at the bottom uh, glossy. Everything else just covered it in ultra matte varnish except for the metals the metals I didn't touch at all and then finally with blood for the blood god I apply it to the skull that he's holding which is a space marine helmet I painted a space wolf helmet at his base and a minotaur's helmet on top because those are the only ones I know of that are well on the planet or have been on the planet. None of the Minotaurs chapter has been there. Space Wolves are technically on Terra as well because of some partnership they have with the Navigator House and I do know the Imperial Fists are there but no one likes the Minotaurs except for the Ad Adeptus Administratum. So I figured they were the most appropriate chapters to put on here. And done. This one actually the video is short because there's not that many steps but I mean well <laughs> Uh, he took a while to paint. Uh, the only hard part really was his body, simply because like each of his arms, I did them uh, individually when it came to the uh, oil paints and stuff. I did them first, dried them, then cleaned them up with a sponge, and then I moved on to other parts of his body, since his body seems to be so segmented. And that was the best way to effectively do it, because the oil paints you have to carefully watch and control, especially for something like this. So I had to paint him in pieces, so that was tedious, but that was about it. Uh, the familiars are painted pretty much the exact same way. And so overall, eh, pretty good. A few missteps here and there, I think. But honestly, he came out looking really well. His chitin looks good. His carapace and armor, very nice. So, I have to, he is just, I want to say an 8, but he is close to a 9. I don't, I just, there's something missing from keeping him to a 9. It just, I don't know what it is. Maybe something. I mean, he's really good, and he came out very well with his flesh and carapace and everything like that. His base turned out well. The 3D printed base is okay. It works with him. It kind of fits. Uh, I'm, I want to say, uh, you know, I, I'll say, I'll say he's a 9. I mean, like, I feel conservatively an 8, but... Mm, all that I've done in the way he appears overall, I and mean, he's just like barely over a 9, what I would consider a 9. I mean, I was able to bring out the detail in him. There's depth in him, clearly. He's not a 10, not by a long shot, because he doesn't super wow me, but... I guess maybe it's because the model is relatively plain. There is detail there, but like the plain chitin stuff. I mean, he's relatively simple to paint, so... I feel, yeah, if I was going into decimal points, he'd be like a 9.1, but but I'll say he is a 9 overall. Alright, so, like the video if you like the video, share it if you want to share it, comment if you have anything to comment, uh, say, or nitpick anything you want to nitpick, and I'll see you soon with more of the Shadow Throne. I'm just knocking them out. Bye.